If you live in Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, Wyoming, and even Nebraska, some of your power may come from the Glen Canyon Dam on the Utah-Arizona border. And you can hear a little bit of crackling. Yeah, you would only want to get so close to those lines, and then there'd be a, a potential, you know. The Glen Canyon Dam is the second highest concrete arch dam in the States. At the base, it's 710 feet high and 1,560 feet across. It was constructed with over 4.9 million cubic yards of concrete. The dam also created Lake Powell, which is the second largest reservoir in the U.S. It enables a crucial part of the Colorado River Compact by controlling the distribution of Colorado River water throughout the West. It generates power for towns and cities in seven states. But there's a chance that hydropower won't last much longer. To understand how power is made, how it gets to your house, and what the risks are for its future, the Salt Lake Tribune got an exclusive tour of the dam. The dam took 10 years to build, starting in the 1950s. From the White House, Dwight D. Eisenhower pressed a telegraph key which set off the first dynamite explosion, starting the beginning of construction. 60 through 63 was the construction power plant, it came online in 64. Same year I did. Before construction could start, they had to build a bridge across the dam. At the time, it was the highest steel arch bridge in the world, spanning a distance of over 1,200 feet. You can see this pre-OSHA, these guys aren't tied off too well. <laughs> Crews built diversion tunnels on either side of the river to divert water while they built the dam. Those tunnels later turned into spillways that they use when water levels are too high. The dam is constructed with concrete blocks. The largest block spans 60 by 210 feet. Crews worked 24 hours a day for two years pouring those blocks. Lady Bird Johnson was on hand to celebrate the opening. The first hydroelectric power was generated on September 4th, 1964. Since its inception, the dam has been criticized by environmentalists for the flooding of Glen Canyon. Some still advocate for its removal. Here's a cutout of the dam from the Bureau of Reclamation. Water from upstream of the dam flows through intakes into pipes inside the dam called penstocks. So that's the pipe, the water's coming in. It's going in the, through the wicket gates, coming down and hitting the turbine. The water then flows down those penstocks and rotates a turbine at the base of the dam. The turbine is connected via shaft to a generator above it. The amount of water that flows through the turbines is controlled by the open or closed position of wicket gates. The wicket gates operating all together kind of act as a valve. Those gates are arranged in a circle around the turbine. Their position is controlled by an operator who manages the rate that the turbine spins. The day we visited, there were four of eight generators in operation. Our tour starts on the top of the dam, where the Bureau has set up an exhibit of decommissioned parts of the apparatus. This was one of the buckets they poured uh, the concrete for the dam with. Uh, each bucket held 24 tons. Took them 400,000 buckets. Every uh, batch they made, they took a core sample. This is one of the core samples. Pretty stout concrete. I've drilled through concrete before. This is the worst concrete I've ever drilled through. <laughs> this is a turbine or a runner, and the water is actually the motive force to get this to turn. And it's connected with a shaft uh, to the rotor, which spins inside the stator, and that generates electricity. The uh, elevations are marked out. You can see right now we're over 3,700 feet. We're going to go down to about 3,187, so a little over 500 feet. An elevator ride took us to the downstream side of the power plant that houses eight generators. So that's the power plant. That's unit one, unit eight's down at the other end. A couple floors down, the water's traveling through that penstock, which is a big pipe. Then it goes down, hits the turbine, which is like a wheel, and spins it. It's connected via a shaft to the uh, rotor. The rotor is inside this air housing, and it spins inside the stator. The combined capacity of the generators is 1,320 megawatts. There's a 230,000 volt line that runs over towards Four Corners, shoots up into Montrose, and goes up into Utah. According to the Bureau of Reclamation, that's enough to supply 425,000 homes with power. Money earned from this hydroelectric power is used to pay for things like the dam construction and maintenance and environmental projects. 
With the reservoir level, there's only so much efficiency you're gonna get by running more than four. So number one, what drives everything is the water demand. We have a water schedule, how much we deliver. Based on that, there's an electrical demand. So we have so much base load that we're supplying electricity out there. Then we also do like voltage control, meaning you know the demand on the grid's always kind of fluctuating and we're trying to support that. So it's three phase power. Comes out of the generator at 13,800 volts. After that, it goes up to the transformer where it takes the 13,800 volts and jumps it up to 345,000 volts. And you can hear a little bit of crackling. Yeah, you would only want to get so close to those lines and then there'd be a, a potential, you know. We have a lot of areas here that are uh, confined spaces. We'll use him to simulate like somebody's hurt and we got to get him out of there. That's his purpose of, yes, yeah. Like that thing's called a slug and wrench. You know, you put this on a nut and you hit it with a sledgehammer, <laughs> socket. So this is the control board for unit eight. It's almost at 100% speed. Wicked gates are about 85% open. Water pressure in a pen stock's about 170 PSI. And it's showing different temperatures of bearings and oil coolers and stuff like that. For more than 60 years, the dam has been delivering power to north of 400,000 households. But climate change and increased water usage is jeopardizing the dam's ability to produce hydroelectric power. The Colorado River's average flows have fallen roughly 20% since the year 2000, and power generation at Glen Canyon Dam and Hoover Dam, which creates Lake Mead on the state line between Arizona and Nevada, has fallen with it. Climate change and chronic water overuse continue to constrict water flow. This jeopardizes the dam's ability to produce hydroelectric power. From 1990 to 2000, Glen Canyon Dam produced 4,600 gigawatt hours of electricity on average each year, according to a 2023 Congressional Research Service report. From 2000 to 2020, that average dropped to 3,800 gigawatt hours, a 17% decrease, according to the report. When Lake Powell reached a record low elevation in 2022, the dam produced just 2,590 gigawatt hours of electricity, a 45% drop compared to the decade before 2000. The amount of electricity produced at either Glen Canyon Dam or Hoover Dam is proportional to how much water rushes through each dam's turbines, as well as the pressure of the water in the reservoir behind it. That means whichever reservoir has more water in it produces more hydropower at its respective dam. These dry years and increased water use in the upper basin reduce power output and result in a lower Lake Powell. Currently, the lake is hovering at just one-third full, with little water expected to fill it as snow melts off the Rocky Mountains this summer.